Hello and welcome back to my Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware update. This PCB is going to be made by PCBWay at some point in the near future, just as I finally test this schematic with the debug output from the Java software emulation for the Afterburner demo that I've been working on. So I thought that I would test the raw video card memory output from the Java emulation with the hardware simulation. So here I am back in the Proteus design tool and I'm going to be running the debug output file. This debug output file contains all of the memory accesses or all of the memory writes rather, which are going to the external video hardware, my Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. I've moved the RGB display into the schematic sheet in Proteus. So that's the little display that you can see roughly in the middle of the screen, nestled in the middle of all of this TTL 74 LS series logic. So it's just building up the screen. And as you can see, the hardware simulation is very slow. But the advantage is, is that I can actually zoom in to different parts of the schematic and I can see the debug values or the debug logic levels in all of the components as the display is being rendered pixel by pixel, scan line by scan line. At the moment, the debug data doesn't have that much information being sent to the sprite display hardware or the scaled sprite display hardware. So most of the logic is actually idle for most of the frame, especially this schematic, which deals mostly with the calculation before it sends the information to the pixel drawing layer, which is the next layer in the schematic. Here in blue are the debug signal levels sampled from various different points in the schematic. So I can have a look at the horizontal and vertical scan line position. I can see when the end of the list signal comes low. So when it's low, that means that the end of the list has been reached. When it's high, it means that the hardware is processing scaled sprites into the pixel buffer, which is the frame buffer. And that's done on the next sheet. But this sheet just deals with scaled sprite extents, the scaled sprite mathematics, all of the internal address calculation, and the sprite hardware registers, which is basically implemented as a, as a, was it a two kilobyte RAM? So given that there's two kilobytes of RAM for the sprite registers and each sprite register is currently 11 bytes long, that gives a good upper limit for the number of sprites that can be displayed. I can move and zoom into this display here. I can see that it's in the middle of starting to display the scaled grid of balls that come in on the title screen. I can see one or two bugs currently in this version of the hardware implementation. So I'm going to need to debug why I'm getting a blue vertical line there. I think that's probably a mistaken transparency calculation or something like that. Perhaps I've got one of the address lines slightly wrong, or maybe it's a, a carry overflow or something like that. Anyway, this is the issue that we have with digital logic schematics is that sometimes you need to be aware of the time in terms of nanoseconds for your longest data path for all of the signals going through the schematic. So I just need to debug that and then see what I can do to fix it, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Just looking at the signal level here for end of list, and it seems to not be going low at the moment for when it's rendering entire frames. That tells me currently actually that this version of the hardware is spending most of its time outputting scaled pixels. And that's not a surprise because in the beginning of the intro animation, the sprites are very near the inverted commas camera and they're actually very large. Let's go to the display. There we go. You can see the display there was showing some quite large sprites near the camera. I'm just panning around the schematic, just having a little look at some of the values. It seems that this logic is working actually pretty well. I'm actually surprised that the debug uh, emulated video card memory access output 
uh, renders as well as it does in the hardware simulation. Now the title screen scaled balls have gone further away from the camera, I can see now that one of the internal addresses for the frame buffer is, that is actually sitting at zero now and when it sits at zero that means that the end of the sprite list has been reached in memory. So even without the uh, hardware clipping optimizations enabled in this schematic, the frame buffer goes idle or the end of the sprite list is reached around about vertical position 7f in hex, which is 127 in decimal. So that means that half the frame buffer time is currently idle, which is great. It means that it's only taking half the frame time to render all of these scaled sprites, including the afterburner logo in the foreground. The afterburner logo is also comprised of scaled sprites. So that's working actually pretty well. I'm really very pleased with how this current version of the hardware is able to consume uh, really very quite complex video card memory debug output from the software emulation. So I just need to fix a couple more hardware bugs and implement the hardware clipping. And then I think this design is ready to go. So we should be transitioning from the title screen now to the game intro scene and there we go. Oh my word, it's able to render the full carrier with the um, with the player aircraft and also the ocean in the background. Well that's fantastic. Even without uh, hardware clipping optimizations it's able to render this without too much issue. So fantastic. This is really very encouraging.